Good morning. I'm Wendy Camp, and I'm one of your worship leaders this morning, and this is the Napa Methodist Church. And wherever you are on your journey of faith, you are welcome here this morning. Uh, there is a new series, worship series, uh, and it's titled Bless to Me. It comes from a Celtic tradition, and today we celebrate God's presence in each moment. And here to get us off to a good start is the God's House Band. <laughs> So she'll be back next week, and that's something to look forward to. 
You can always check out the church website at NampaMethodist.org for the calendar of events. And if you can't find what you're looking for, call the church office and speak to Diane, because Diane knows everything. And since there's no basket for you to put your prayer requests into, you can speak to Diane and email her with your requests at office at NapaMethodist.org. Well, before I forget, there will be a Lenten devotional booklet this year created by Holly Zaccone. And if Holly should happen to call you, say yes when she asks you to be part of this, this tradition. We've been doing this for years. If you'd like to volunteer, you can check in with Diane, and Lent, for your information, begins on the 2nd of March. And now we're going to hear the band with Lift Every Voice and Sing. It's often referred to as the Black National Anthem, a hymn by brothers James and J. Rosamund Johnson, written for the 91st anniversary of President Abraham Lincoln's birthday in 1900. It's fitting music for this Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. Let's hear it. Rising of 
the Son, I will strengthen you, I will help you. To the going down of the same, I will hold you with my righteous right hand. The name of the Lord shall be praised. Amen. Amen.
morning, I'm Pastor Mary Lee Shepherd, and today we begin a new worship series based on Celtic spirituality that's called Bless to Me. Celtic culture and language has its roots in Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and Southwest England. Blessing is an integral part of Celtic spirituality, seeing life itself as a blessing and celebrating the ordinary tasks of the day. Each week in this worship series, we'll look at some aspect of Celtic spirituality that includes blessing. In his book, To Bless the Space Between Us, Irish poet and philosopher John O'Donoghue wrote, in the parched deserts of postmodernity, modernity, a blessing can be like the discovery of a fresh well. It would be lovely if we could rediscover our power to bless one another. I believe each one of us can bless. When a blessing is invoked, he writes, it changes the atmosphere. In the light and reverence of blessing, a person or situation becomes illuminated in a completely new way. In a dead wall, a new window opens. In dense darkness, a path starts to glimmer and into a broken heart healing falls like morning dew. Let us begin to learn how to bless one another. Whenever you give a blessing, a blessing returns to enfold you. Celtic pre-Christian culture dating back as far as 500 BCE was soaked in the sacredness of creation. Celtic Christian spirituality continued to embrace the natural world seeing it infused with the divine presence and showing glimmers of the world beyond the surface of things. When Western theology became largely an intellectual undertaking, Celtic theology remained grounded in the sacredness of matter and nature and celebrating that humanity is made of the same stuff as the earth. Jesus used the natural world as a tool to teach about God's blessing for all creation. He talked about birds and wildflowers who are known and cared for by God, their simple existence witnessing to God's blessing. The word blessing is used in all kinds of ways. Winning, winning the lottery is called a blessing, and avoiding a traffic jam is called a blessing. And so blessings are often seen as signs of luck or fortune. And there's a random quality in that kind of blessing as if God or the universe smiled at one person but not at another. A blessing is sometimes said at the dinner table or when someone sneezes, but a blessing is meant to sacramentalize something, to make it holy. Originally, the word meant to sprinkle with sacrificial blood. The Celtic understanding of blessing is seeing and acknowledging God's presence in every aspect of living from the mundane to the marvelous. Blessing is the stuff of life, not just good and lucky and fortunate stuff, but life itself is the blessing. Yesterday morning over at Chai Latte, one of my friends pointed out to me when I was lamenting about pondering and preaching blessing in this time of pandemic. My friend said that hard times make us more attuned and more sensitive to blessings. In hard times, we, we long for blessings. We long to give them, to receive them, to notice them. I'd say these last two years have qualified in many, many ways as hard times. And I also realize that it's been a time of unexpected blessing. The late humorist Irma Bombeck said she was always on the lookout for a blessing that wasn't disguised. I don't think we get to choose how we stumble upon blessing unless it's to develop the Celtic understanding of life itself as a blessing. Yesterday I walked the labyrinth here at church. I felt restless and unfocused, so I went outside to this sacred pathway. Another aspect of Celtic spirituality is journeying with eyes and souls open to encountering the Divine Presence. Now, walking the labyrinth seems to me to be sort of a spiritual burlesque. A glove gets stripped off and then another, and a boa is flung off, and a shoe gets kicked away, and eventually everything non-essential is stripped away. 
Walking the Labyrinth is a kind of dance, a journey of taking things off that are a burden and weigh heavy on us. Our labyrinth has been made holy by all the bodies who sat and knelt and lay on it to carefully repaint the design. As I walked, I released the worries and fears clinging to me, and I eventually, as I wound my way on this sacred path, I began to give thanks for the blessing. The blessing of life with God, the blessing of my imperfect and unfinished self, the blessing of loving and being loved, the blessing of opportunities. My journey in the labyrinth was an encounter with the divine presence. As I walked towards the center and out again, I was filled with gratitude. The psalmist in today's reading was filled with gratitude. They saw God as do the Celts in the natural world, signs of the divine presence in the hours of the day in the earth's rotation. Praise the Lord's name. Let the Lord's name be blessed from now until forever from now. From sunrise to sunset, let the Lord's name be praised. The Lord is high over all the nations. God's glory is higher than the skies. Naming God's blessing helps us to recognize and receive the blessing. Somehow naming them as blessings makes, our, makes ordinary things like sunrises and sunsets sacred. Naming blessing connects us with the sacredness of all things and connects us to the blessing giver, God. Today's gospel story is part of the Beatitudes, a word that means the blessings. And it's a compilation of Jesus' teaching that began with the words, blessed are. Now his words instructed but also shocked his listeners because like us, they considered blessing to be the stuff of fortune, prosperity, luck, and success. But Jesus said, blessed are, and they said the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, and the persecuted. Jesus named the unblessed and the unblessable, and he turned on its head what it means to be blessed because God loves, affirms, and accepts all of us in all of life's circumstances. In Christ, God has shared this human life with us, and it is a sacred journey. Jesus said to those who were following him, what I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting, so that you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and don't know the way God works fuss over these things, but you know God and you know how God works. So steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Give your attention to what God is doing right now. Jesus was saying, Pay attention. Notice and give thanks for the blessing of right now. This is Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, and tomorrow is a holiday in honor of his life and work. Dr. King was a civil rights activist and a Nobel Peace Prize winner, and he was also a Baptist minister and the son of a Baptist minister. He'd have known Jesus' words about paying attention to what God is doing right now. One of Dr. King's prayers was, use me, God. Show me how to take who I am, who I want to be, and what I can do, and use it for a purpose greater than myself. Dr. King's prayer was to be a blessing. We can pray to be a blessing and to notice life, as Jesus said, our everyday concerns, as opportunities to notice and give thanks for the divine presence. This is a blessing I found online and I offer it this morning in these hard times and in honor of Dr. King. May his memory be for a blessing. The world is now too dangerous and too beautiful for anything but love. May your eyes be so blessed that you see God in everyone. Your ears so that you hear the cries of the poor. 
May your hands be so blessed that everything you touch is a sacrament. Your lips so that you speak nothing but the truth in love. May your feet be so blessed that you run to those who need you. And may your heart be so open, so set on fire that your love, your love changes everything. Amen. Christ, the Prince of Peace, 
who would have us pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. I'm Diane Mahler, and I'm lucky enough to work in the church office. I always look forward to January. To me, it's an exciting time in the church. We get to set some new goals. We get to um, new calendars that aren't scribbled on. We get to decide new things, and sometimes we even get to stop doing things that have run their course. This year, we're lucky enough to have two new employees who are bringing many new gifts and ideas and new ways of thinking. It's all very exciting to think of the many opportunities that have opened up for our church. January is also a great time to dream. We dream about which spiritual practices we want to include in our daily lives this year. It's also a great time to tie up some loose ends from the prior year. Speaking of which, I'm going to give some of you another opportunity to get those pledge cards out of your stack that you put them in with your gift receipts and other things and get them mailed into the church office. If uh, you can't find it, if you'd like to call the church office, we'll take it over the phone for you. I'm also going to be making calls this week uh, to remind you one more time. For those of you who have never pledged, I'd love for you to give me a call. I'd welcome the opportunity to talk about the spiritual practice of pledging. However you choose to give, your finance team will be filled with gratitude for being able to put their dreams in motion for a balanced budget in January. For those of you who are looking for a way to give your offering this morning, you may go on our website and give it online. You may mail a check to the church, or you can bring it by the church office this week. God bless you.
feel blessed to be here. I do have the last word on this second Sunday after Epiphany. And it's the first Sunday of this new worship series called Blessed to Me. Today the focus was on God's presence in our every moment. From the rising of the sun to the whole of one day to the next. We're always in the presence of God. Now, I'm the sort of guy who likes to count things. And this is the second Sunday in the current round of worshiping, not worshiping in person. And so how much longer is this going to go on? I have no idea. We, through worship team, are planning on the status quo remaining quo for the rest of January as a minimum. There are some hopeful signs in the news that this Omicron that took off like a rocket is going to fall just as quickly, that is, unless something else happens. One of the best classes I took in college was one that taught us how to think on our feet. Adaptability is something that we're all really getting good at. And I want to hold up as an excellent example of adaptability your worship team. There's Mary Lee, there's team leader Pat, and a small company of technical and artistic and administrative workers who in sickness and in health are working to maintain this worshiping experience. Thank you for your patience and support and we, as we evolve into whatever it is that comes next because we are the church. This series is called Blessed to Me, and it's based on a Celtic tradition, so in parting, let me offer a modern Celtic blessing. Blessed by all things, wings of breath, delight of eyes, wonder of whisper, intimacy of touch, eternity of soul, urgency of thought, miracle of health, embrace of God, embrace of God. And may that God bless you and keep you and grant you peace to that. I say amen. And after those gentle words, here's the band with something entirely different. They're going to send out the fire. <laughs> 